Hi guys, welcome. Welcome everyone. I'm gonna give um, everyone maybe two more minutes to join us and then we're gonna start. And hopefully you all came prepared with a pre-sketched outline because we will start with a pre-sketched outline. So if by any chance you don't have the pre-sketched outline yet, you can pre-sketch it now because you do have a couple more minutes. And the outline is in the description of this video. There's a Dropbox link, so you can click on that and you'll get the outline. I'm actually gonna darken up my outline quickly because as I can see now, it's not very really visible on camera. So I'm just gonna darken it up a bit more so it's a bit more visible on camera. So you guys can see it better. And you can customize your angel outline however you want. This is just a suggestion. Uh, basically, we're just looking for a silhouette of a body and some wings. But of course, the positioning of this little feathers can be completely different. Um, it's not specific to this painting. These structures would be the same even if your wings were, let's say, going this way versus like, let's say you did it horizontally and put your wings this way versus fold it at the back. So the, again, instructions for painting would be exactly the same. So if you prefer to sketch that instead, that is totally fine. And basically how you sketch it from scratch is you start by putting the outlines of your two wings. Then you do the silhouette in between, which we barely see. We just see the neck, uh, the head, and um, a little bit of the backside here. So that's all we see, very simple. And then once you have the outlines of the wings, the silhouette, you just fill them in with feathers. So you literally just fill them in with as many feathers as you want or can. And when I was creating mine, I did, I kept in mind that I want my upper feathers to be a little bit um, smaller. And I wanted my feathers as they go down to get larger, larger and larger. So I kept that in mind while filling it in with feathers. So you can do the same thing again. You're absolutely welcome to customize all that. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask in chat. I am happy to help with whatever I can. All right, I darkened up my outline and now you can see it much better. I might even add a couple more wings here. Let's add a, sorry, a couple more feathers on those wings. Hi, Vicky, thanks for saying hello. All righty guys, so let's go through all our supplies and everything else that we need for today. So first thing, I'm using 8 by 10 inch canvas that's pre-sketched, but again, you're more than welcome. It's actually like sketching from scratch. It's so easy. Even if you just refer to the outline that we provided um, as a reference and don't specifically copy transfer it to your uh, canvas. So you can go with any size canvas, whichever size you want. The, just keep in mind the bigger, the longer it will take you, but overall the instructions would be the exact same. All right, so canvas paint, I'm using as always primary colors only. And that is yellow, blue, red, plus black and white. So for yellow and red, I'm only gonna use a tiny smidge and I'm mostly gonna use, oh, thank you. She is quite a lovely lady. Um, so for red, it's mostly just to make brown. I'm not using red for anything else. And for blue, sorry, for yellow, it's to create this particular shade of blue that's more like a slightly dimmer, 
teal or emer uh, sorry aqua color, but a little bit dimmer, a little bit more muted. So these two colors can definitely be replaced. You could totally use uh, pre-mixed colors for this. You're going to need this darker version of this color, the only blue that we use everywhere. Uh, it's like, again, colder, slightly dimmer blue. So any, technically any dark blue, but ideally maybe greenish blue or something slightly on a colder or greener side. Or even again, if you have the dark aqua, um, you might want to mute it down a little bit with brown, but it will work if you wanted to use that as a pre-mixed color, plus brown, plus black and white. So you can do that too. Um, that would work really well. So you don't have to mix anything. I don't mind mixing and I think it's good for learning. So I'm going to be mixing everything from scratch. But again, you can make your life easier. But you know what? You wouldn't even need black here, technically. If you buy uh, brown, dark aqua or dark teal or just dark cold blue plus white. Those three colors that you're going to need if you use premixed. All right, brushes. Any brushes that you want. Whatever brushes you're comfortable with, but generally you want to have something larger for the background. So let's say I'm going to go with this one, for example. Not that it matters, just something larger. Uh, something medium for filling in the body and the wings. So for medium, I'm going to use this one. It's As you can see, it's more like a medium small. It's not true medium, but honestly, there's so many elements here that are on the smaller side that I don't really need a true medium because everything else I can do with my large one. And the most important brush is a small one with a pointy tip because of all those outlines here. All those outlines I cannot do with something like that. I can only do with something like this. You see the difference? Tip, the pointy tip, the needle-like tip. That's what you want. Um, again, because of all those beautiful outlines everywhere. And that's pretty much it for our brushes. So what I'm gonna start with here is, yes, I will start with the background, but before even that, I will actually, actually mix my two colors that I'll be using. I'll mix that blue and I'll mix my brown. So for mixing, you can use either medium brush or a larger brush or any other brush that you have in the house. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna mix with, I'll mix with this brush. I'm not gonna be using it for painting, but I'll mix with it. Oh, and of course, guys, water and the paper towel are must, or if you prefer, you can use reusable fabric cloth. It doesn't have to be specifically a paper towel. I'm gonna grab a little piece of paper towel here. And I'm gonna start by mixing my brown. So brown, you start with about equal parts of red and yellow. You're not gonna need too much of a brown, so there's no need to make like an enormous amount of it. You really need a very small amount of it, but I'll make just a little bit more than what I need. Because also, plus it dries. My paint dries fast, so some of it will dry by the time we get to it. So red and yellow, about equal parts, and then you start adding black little by little until you arrive at the right shade. So add some in, mix it up. If it turned into a shade of brown that you want, awesome. You don't need to do anything else. If it didn't, continue doing the same. And if you find later that your brown is nice and dark, but it's slightly towards one side or the other, it has like a shade of something you don't like. So for me, this is good brown. I don't need to be adding anything else to it. But sometimes you can find that your brown has almost like an, too much of an orange tint to it or almost like a red, uh, dark cherry tint to it. So that means you have too much red, just add a bit more yellow and that will um, fix that. And it can be the opposite. It can have almost like a greenish tint and be like a swampy browny green. In which case, in this particular painting, I actually wouldn't mind that. I think that's a good shade. I may even add a bit more yellow to mine just to achieve that effect of slightly greener brown. So I personally don't mind it for this painting, but if it bothers you, you can add a little bit more red and it will take care of that. So I have my brown here. I'm gonna try to empty my brush as much as I can, not to waste the paint. All 
All right, and then I'm gonna mix my blue. So again, we're aiming for a darker version because it's so easy to make it lighter by just mixing in a little bit of white, uh, but it's harder to make it darker. So we're gonna mix in the darkest version that we'll need and then we'll make it lighter as we go, as needed. So I'm gonna start by taking some blue on the side, some white. Remember, we're mixing a fairly dark version of it. So not, not as dark, but fairly dark. And then I'll add a little bit of yellow to it, just to give it that aqua greenish teal undertone. And to that mixture, once I feel like it's a good color, I'm just gonna add a smidge of brown and that is to make it a little bit dimmer. Yeah, so reading your comments. Gold is amazing addition here. I did wanna mention that. Uh, once we move further further into this painting so sorry guys I'm all over the place let's add a little bit of brown in here awesome this is a perfect color that's exactly what i needed for that base blue this is what it looks like approximately and again we can always suggest it as we go to um the gold or copper would be an incredible addition to this even to this color scheme as is you don't need to change color scheme to make it work with gold. This will work incredible with gold or copper or brass. So any of those gold or tone, like silver, if, you, if your preference is silver, I know not everyone likes gold color. Some people love silver. You can add silver. It's still going to look good. But for me personally, if I were to choose what color to add here, I would go with gold or brass for sure. And you can add it as an accent, just like as a splatter in the background same way that I did with brown or you can add it as a little outlines or highlights in the wings but only after it's fully done so after it's fully done you can add a little highlight um, in the wings so yeah I wouldn't start with it and I wouldn't um, add it anywhere at the beginning at all All right, so let's start. I think that's a good start. So for the background, you're gonna use your large brush, whatever brush that may be. And for right around here, we're gonna make a pretty light color. And a little bit further, we're gonna make a slightly darker color. I'm actually gonna start with a little bit further area. So I'm gonna take some of this on the side. I'll add some white. I'll bring it to the shade that I want it to be. This is pretty close, but I may even add a smidge of brown to this just to make it. You see, it gets a little greener, a little dimmer. All right, and with this color, I'm gonna cover all my edges. And you can even bring it a little bit closer to the middle than what you intend to see in the end because the lighter colors, we're gonna overlap and blend. All right, so 
that's a start now I'm gonna make a much lighter color right away before this dries so to the same color I just use I'm just gonna add a lot more white and with this I'm gonna go a lot closer and my lines actually the darkness of my lines for wings allows me to be a little bit messy around them because I still can see them so it's not a deal breaker I can still see my lines even if I get on them a little bit so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to slightly overlap them in a couple places. And then I'm going to start blending it. So as soon as you color it in this part, start blending it into the background. So you don't end up with two separate colors, but you end up with them nicely merged into one another. Oops, wrong spot. I'm actually going to bring some up into the dress a little bit too. Really gonna add a little bit more light color around here. And just continue blending everything until you feel happy with it. Oh, hi guys. Thanks for joining. All right, I'm going to let it be. Everything for me is colored, as you can see, all inside the feathers, like in between the feathers. All those areas are important. So make sure you cover all in between the feather areas. Again, it's not a big deal if your feathers get a little bit overlapped. That's easily fixable and make sure you bring it up the dress a little bit. All right, mine's ready, but I will give you guys a couple minutes for that. And then we'll move to our next step.
So then we're gonna move to our wings and we're actually gonna do our wings in um, two colors at first. And it's gonna look a little funny because it's gonna look like an outline and filling in, but it's just what it is. We're just gonna, we're just gonna get through it. And then we'll start adding accents and it will all make a lot more sense. So right away, I'm gonna be using two of those brushes. One for the outline, but I'm not aiming to create this darkest color for the outline. I'm aiming for this medium tone mostly. So you see something like that versus something like that. Something like this I'm gonna add later as um, little contrast lines. I'm not gonna be using them right away. Something like this I'm gonna be using right away because this is what I want for my starters, just to fill them in. So I would say we're gonna make that medium color. So again, not this dark one, definitely a bit lighter. So again, I'm gonna take some of this, some of that, mix it up, make a nice, Maybe this one, let's try it, let's try it. And I'm gonna start filling them in right away with a light color. So similar to the background, maybe a smidge darker than a background, but just the background color is fine too. So what are we gonna do? Is we're gonna add, let me move this somewhere else so you guys can see the picture. We're gonna add, let's start from the top, I guess. A little outline on a section of it. How big of a section? That's entirely up to you. How big of a section can you manage to do two shades before it dries? Because they have to be done before it dries. So I think this is a good start for me. You see, I added some outline. Now you can either continue using your small brush or move to medium and then take that lighter color that you used for your background or something similar to that. Again, it doesn't have to be that particular color, but just something similar. And you're gonna fill this in. And you want it to almost like merge into your back outline. That's why we're doing it on wet. Yeah, you still need to be able to see the um, separation lines because otherwise you're just going to lose them because we could just color the whole wing in with um, this background color but then you're going to lose all your lines so that's why we're not doing it we're doing the outline and then we're doing the filling so yes you still want to see your outline you don't want it to merge fully but also you do want them to be somewhat merged so they don't look like you were just using sharpies let's say and we're gonna continue doing the exact same thing for the whole wing. We're not gonna do differentiation on shades yet. How do you see, like here's darker, here's lighter. That's gonna be done on later layers. Right now, our goal is just in this manner to cover the whole thing, one and two. That's all we want right now. So again, I'm gonna switch to my small brush. And again, do the section at a time that you can manage to do the outline and filling on wet. And another thing you could be doing as you move on to slightly larger feathers is you can be slightly shading where the feather comes in. So do you see, I'm adding a bit more of this darker color where the feather grows from. And it's not like a super important thing to do, but, it will make it a little bit darker there and it's a good thing because it will uh, look like it's slightly, um, there's some shadow falling from the other feathers there, which is a good look here. You see some of the feathers that are slightly darker where they grow from look like it creates a bit more of that overlap look. And again, if it's too much to think about at the same time and too much of objective to pursue at this stage, it's not a big deal. 
you don't have to do it but if you can that would be awesome I would say guys generally this part takes the longest that's the longest part it's literally just outlining and filling in outlining and filling in and I like being myself never make enough paint so continue mixing it as I go All right, so I did another section. Again, I'll switch to my lighter color now. All right. Maybe I'll even add a bit more of this dark line. So sometimes if I accidentally lost my dark lines while um, filling in with lighter lines, I can always go back while it's wet and just add it in. That's a good way to do it too. Yeah, in this particular painting, it's honestly not that important that you stick with order of things. There's no particular order. It's just the order that I find the easiest. And as we do this, does anyone have any awesome plans for the holidays? Tell me what's up, you guys. Our plans so far are just the family. Just so you know, the, I guess, standard Christmas plans. Dinner with the family. Specifically with my in-laws, because my parent, my mom actually lives abroad. So we don't see her for Christmas. She comes visit usually about once a year. Sometimes even once a couple years because she lives pretty far. So yeah, we usually celebrate Christmas and all the big holidays with my in-laws. So that's our plan. Diana, you don't have to use Dropbox. To answer your question, um, I'm just gonna read the question to everyone because 
Sometimes people watch from the video later and they don't understand what question I'm responding to because the live chat is not always an option for replay. Um, you don't have to use Dropbox, actually. You can just click on that Dropbox link. You don't have to register or do anything. It just opens up image and you just save it. So it's a convenient way for us to store files that we can share via link for free. But you don't have to be signed up to Dropbox or anything like that. You just basically either click on the link if it's clickable, or if not, you just copy paste the web address that we list in the description. And it literally should just open the image. It shouldn't be asking you for anything. I also did post the traceable. If you are a Facebook user, if you if you have Facebook account, I did post it as a JPEG to um, the Facebook page that we the Facebook event page for this event. So you can grab it from there, and I have emailed it to everyone who signed up um, for this tutorial, who registered for this tutorial on our website. So if you did register, you should probably see it in your inbox too because I did email it out earlier today. Yeah, so you see, it already looks really nice. Like it starts coming together. And even though it's like a little too dark right now and it doesn't have too much a dimension, it does have some light and dark and some of the layering some overlapping visible but it doesn't have nearly enough yet but it will get there but this is already a good start and this actually looks cool as is yeah no worries and guys if this is your first time joining us and maybe you're not familiar with how things work um we do um this video is going to stay right here on youtube so you can come back and do it anytime it is not going away. We never remove videos. Once we go live on YouTube, everything stays here. We don't remove anything. So you, if today is just not the day, for any reason, you can come back for this whenever you have time. Dana, yes, absolutely. You can just print from image. So basically you click on that link or again, copy paste the um, web address from the description of this video and the image will pop up. You can either save it on your device and print it or you can print it right away, whatever works for you or you can save it for later too, whatever works. Or again, depending whether you signed up on our website, you may already have the image, just JPEG image in your inbox because I did email it out or you can go to the event page on our Facebook and download JPEG from there and just print it. Again, it doesn't require any software. It doesn't require anything special. Just regular, I guess, printer and internet. The only difference here, because YouTube doesn't allow you to just add the image in the comments, we have to add a link to the image. But again, if you just click on a link, it will bring you right to the image. And on Facebook, we are it's, pos it's possible for us to actually just add the image as a JPEG, so you don't have to even click anywhere. You just download it from there. or even click on it and print it right away. Whatever works best. You know what, I'm just gonna stick with the small brush at this point. You get too much using two brushes.
Okay, no problem. So Christmas plans, anyone has Christmas plans? Anyone is going on vacation? Or maybe doing something super exciting this time around Christmas? Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We try. All right, this wing, the left one is almost done and I really like what it's looking like. This makes me very happy. And I can notice I'm shading, especially the bigger wings, I'm shading a little bit more. Again, no, I know that it's something you have to have to do, but I do like doing it. I think it looks cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, nurses have um, crazy schedules. That's quite a job, doctors and nurses. Those are tough schedules, not for everyone, for sure. Well, I hope you have a good Christmas with your daughter-in-law and grandson and son. How old is your grandson? All right, so guys, I'm gonna move on to second one and I'm literally gonna do the exact same thing. No difference at all. Diana, to answer your question, Bumblebee on um, the flower, that tutorial is on YouTube, but it's not in a free access, as you said, like you mentioned that you, that you purchased one on a website. So upon purchase, you should have received um, a PDF document, a downloadable document. You should have received the prompting to download it right away upon purchase, but also it should be in your email. So if you check your email, you should be able to see it. Uh, and check your spam folders too. Sometimes stuff goes there. So download that PDF and there inside would be links. So click on them and the videos will pop up. So technically, yes, it is stored. We do store all our videos on YouTube. It's just those that are, are not like live free events. Those that are either paid video tutorial release or were hosted through Zoom. Those would be made as private videos versus public videos. Nice, four is a fun age. I'm sure he keeps everyone very busy.
No worries. And yeah, if you can't locate the bee, just email us. We'll resend it to you. It's not a problem. All right, so starting from the top, working our way down. I know, I love the animal bots too. Chris has such a amazing, I find that her sense of humor is incredible. I think every painting tutorial that she makes, she tries to insert something really funny into it or something cheeky. And there is a new butt tutorial, uh, animal butt tutorial coming up, by the way. We don't, haven't scheduled it yet, but Chris promised that she'll make one for January. So feel free to keep checking for that. We'll post it as soon as we have it, as soon as she makes it. All right, so notice I'm moving on to larger um, feathers, so I'm starting to shade them a little bit. And again, dark. And light right away and repeat. Right? Agreed. There can never be enough butts. All right, moving lower. Next little batch. Feathery feathers. All right, almost halfway through second wing. Not yet, but get in there. Slowly, slowly get in there.
Drag a few more. Oh, yes, that's a great idea to do different colors for different people. Yeah, because again, all you need is literally three colors, right? Plus potential um, addition f uh, of gold or, you know, silver or copper. So yeah, you need the dark color. For, I'm using this blue, right? But you could replace it with anything. You can replace it with purple, with pink, with orange, with red, with straight blue. I mean, any color you can think of. Plus brown, plus white, plus optionally gold or copper or silver. And again, super optionally. So yeah, that's a great idea. Can also probably include a little writing that is meaningful for someone who you're gifting it to. Jen, you said you all look chunky. You mean the feathers look chunky, not wispy, or the whole painting or the lines? Can you just tell me what? And also, um, it could be your blending. Like you could always make your lines thinner by just going back to your lighter color and just trimming them a little bit. So basically, just color in a bit more so the visible lines in between are a little bit smaller. So what you can see left less in dark color, but also I wouldn't worry about it too much yet. This is not the final. We're still gonna add white highlights that you could trim with and that you can layer with, um, and just do a lot with. Plus you can add, we're gonna add this darker blue, plus we're gonna add brown. So I wouldn't worry about that right now. There's There are lots more opportunities ahead to um, fix that.
the wings. Yeah, no worries. Uh, again, so if it's the wing shape itself that looks a little chunky, not the feathers, you could change those shape of the feathers a little bit to give it a little more point or a curve. Do you see how my feathers have a little bit of a curvy point here ends to all of them? So you can include that, but also this requires a good small brush. If your small brush is not good, that could be the reason to that to that slight feeling of heaviness and chunkiness to it. But again, you could always fix that with the further layers. So talking about small brushes, because I do suspect that it likely is your small brush, but could be pain too. Um, talking about small brushes, this brush is actually the most important brush you will ever buy because everything else can be easily done with any brush. Now the small details require a good small brush. The brush that I use, not expensive, not fancy brush of any kind. I don't even remember the name. I just got it off Amazon um, in a set of brushes and was Let's say pretty cheap, it was like $10, maybe $15 per set, per large set. So it was not, and that is Canadian dollars. So for you Americans, that would be even less because Canadian dollar is pretty low right now. So yeah, that would be like maybe $8 of your money for a whole set. But what I do want to mention is I use for acrylic, for the small brush, watercolor brush. This is actually not acrylic brush, it is a watercolor brush. Because I personally find that watercolor brushes do the do better job when it comes to detailed work. Yes, they do require a lot more care. So you cannot leave this brush dirty even a little bit. You have to wash it really well and you know don't abuse it. Don't like do this with a brush. Always only use nicely watered down liquid paint with it because otherwise you're gonna ruin the brush. It's not made for heavy body paint. It's made for nice and liquid paint. But when used properly, it will last. You take good care of it and it does beautiful job with the fine details. Yes, they're available in lots of art stores, craft stores, you can find acrylic brush specifically for acrylic that have a really fine tip. And they're expensive normally very expensive. I had quite a few of those and they all died on me eventually. I did not find them being more worth the price than a regular cheap watercolor brush. But that's just me. That's just my opinion based on a lot of money spent in brushes over the years. As long as you take care of your small watercolor brush, it will last you a long time and it will give you the best results because of that tip. That's what you're looking for. Uh, again, you can buy expensive acrylic brush, more expensive, let's say. It doesn't have to be crazy expensive. There is a range for acrylic brushes of small. But again, I don't find necessarily that it will give you better results than watercolor brush or it will last longer. I find that's about the same. It just costs more. All right, so the wings are done the background, the backdrop for wings. The wings fully are not done, but the backdrop for wings is done. So now I'm gonna move on to my body. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same color I just used for the outline, and then I'm gonna wash it towards the middle, create a little gradient between that and white. So what I'm gonna do, and that light color. Let's make a bit more of that medium color, and you can use medium or small brush, whatever works for you. I'm gonna stay with small, I may as well, I'm already using it. So I need a little bit of this color, again, because clearly, as you notice, I don't mix a whole bunch. I only mix as I go. Now I'm gonna add this outline. You 
can do one side or both sides at the same time. I'd say that's entirely up to you, depending again on how fast you work. You gen if you find that you're a bit of a fractionist or just generally don't love the fast pace, maybe do one side at a time. I prefer fast pace. I find that I thrive better. Just, yeah, I do better in a fast pace. So I'm gonna do two sides at the same time. You see I kind of blended them a little bit towards the middle. Now I'm gonna switch my brush to a medium brush. And I'll go back to this background-ish color. And I'll take that. I'll color in the rest and I'll blend it in. And then I'll add my white. But only, you only blend the inner side. You don't have to blend the outer side. Let the outer side stay sharp. Do you see it's nicely blended? It goes from this darker to the medium. And then after that, you can just take straight white and you can lighten up while everything is still wet. Just the middle part here. So I wouldn't go with my white too close to the edges here. I'm gonna stay more closer to the middle. And then I will even just grab my large brush. Just blend it down a bit. If you wanted to lighten up background a bit more, you can. Um, so basically you can just grab a bit more white and almost like dry brush it around to create more of like a halo glowing look. I'm doing this with a large brush and I'm literally very lightly dry brushing it, but also it's a tricky technique. So I would say do it if you're not scared of doing it. And if you feel like it's needed for your painting, if you feel like it's really already glowing, then don't do it. Because again, it's a tri tricky technique and it's not the easiest technique because you have to only use a small amount of paint. You see, I'm almost like using an eyeshadow in a way. This is how light it is. You see, that's what you need to have the right consistency paint because if it's too thick, it's not gonna do it. If it's too watery, it's gonna, not gonna do it. So it has to be somewhere middle ground. And then just a generally very light touch. The brush actually doesn't matter here. Any brush will do this as long as your technique is right and as long as your paint is in the right consistency. I literally, as you can see, I'm just like scooping a tiny, tiny amount and then I'm rubbing it into my brush. And then this is what I'm using. You see how little bit I have of paint on it? This is the amount of paint. And then I'm lightly, lightly, almost like rubbing it in to create that little glow around. Again, optional, very optional. See for yourself if you want it, need it, or if you don't. All right, I'm happy with this, loving it. Don't wanna be adding anything else to the background for now. This amount of white is awesome. So now I'm gonna to move to my wings and I'm gonna do 
have two of a more contrast colors. So now I'm gonna go with slightly darker one. So this darker one, darker blue, and I'm gonna go with pure white to highlight some of the feathers. Now you can do highlights on all or you can do highlights on some. For me personally, the top has majority of highlights and it's the most visible ones. Then the outer edge has more. And then as I go further in here, it's less and less and less. Because we're imagining this is where the light is hitting the wings a bit more. And then it's less as we go towards the inside. So I'm gonna repeat about the same thing here. Um, and you can use either small brush or medium brush. I would say whatever works for you. I'm gonna go with a small one. I'm gonna take a little bit of white. Again, I'm not using a ginormous amount and I'm watering down my white a little bit to make it just slightly more transparent here. And then I'm gonna start adding little flicks. And for the areas that's supposed to be super light, like for example, the tops, I will just add more than one layer. I'm not gonna try to pile it on uh, right away in a very thick layer. It's not the goal for me. I would rather have a second layer later once I add it everywhere, if I find that it's still needed. And here I try to highlight a bit more the end, the bottom of the wing as well, because you remember how we added the darker gradient to where the wings go from. I don't wanna accidentally lose that or get rid of that. So I'm trying to always a bit more focus on the bottom of the feather when possible. Thank you, Joanna. She does look quite nice. I like her. And another thing I do wanna mention guys here, if you wanna take on an extra challenge, you could actually turn some of those wings, some of those feathers into more feathery looking things. So for example, choose some larger ones. Like for example, I did all those ones here. It's hard to see, but they have a bit more feathery texture. Do you see? They have a bit more lines versus just flat, um, Highlight. So let me show you what I mean by that. For example, I'm gonna add a flat highlight first, and then I'm gonna add a bit more feathery texture. So that is more of a feathery texture. Optional, because it does change the dynamic of the painting a little bit. So it, it really depends whether you like that or not as well. All right, so to see, I made majority lightness here, and now I'm just, I'm still gonna add maybe a few brush strokes going towards the middle, but I wouldn't be focusing on there much because I don't find that I wanna have uh, it as light. So maybe just a couple little flicks, but that's enough. And now I can lighten up the top a bit more. I'm just adding another layer of white here. Again, in this very feathery manner, because again, everything is feathers. We're trying to maintain that featheriness. All right, that ring is done. Now I'm gonna to move to my right one.
And you see this lightness by adding the white, you're almost like merging it a little bit more back into the background as well. All right, and maybe I'll even add a bit more white again right here, just a touch. All right. I think I am ready to move to my darkest color, which is gonna be the darkest blue. So I'm just gonna water it down a little bit and I'll take just a touch of it. Again, I don't need a ginormous amount of this color. Just a touch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add contrast to certain outlines and majority of contrast I want to have around here I don't want to be going all the way up or all the way down so I'm not I'm not focusing on the edge necessarily like you can hit a little bit of edge here if you want to but I'm not trying to make up an outline I'm mostly going to highlight a few feathers and just make them a bit more contrast or pop a little more so I'm going to start somewhere around here I'm just going to focus on certain areas. You guys will see what I mean once I'm done one wing, just by the difference between the wing that was done and the wing that wasn't. It's not a massive difference. Because again, they already have all the lines, they already have all the contrast, we're just kind of making a portion of it slightly darker. So again, it just adds another dimension, another layer to this painting, which is what the beauty of it is. The more layers, the more dimensions you have, the better it's gonna look in the end. Like I could go all the way to the middle or I could stop because I will also be adding brown there so you're technically not going to see it as much. So this is up to you how far you want to go.
Okay, so I have one ring now. You can see the difference. That's the difference. So again, it just adds another layer of complexity. I mostly focused to this part. Um, I didn't go to the edge at all. Like as far as I went is this line. I didn't go past this line right here. So I didn't go on the very edge and I didn't go top and I didn't go bottom because I want those areas to be slightly lighter and a little more subtle versus this where I want it to be a bit more visible. And I'm just going to repeat that on the other side. Again, it's not a massive difference, but there is a difference. And of course, if you want, you can add a bit of that shading as you go. So um, just a couple lines from where the wing grows, just to darken up that section a little bit. I did do a bit of shading here. So as I went, just flicked some from right underneath the previous way, the previous feather. <coughs> oh, sorry, guys. <coughs> Cough. All right, I think I'm pretty much done here. We'll extend it just a touch more right here. Ta-da! Both of my wings are done. If you want, you could bring a little bit of this color in a silhouette. I personally wouldn't. I think I have more than enough darkness on a silhouette and it's not something I need. So I'm not gonna be doing that. And I'm gonna move straight to my brown because what, what wait for? No need to wait. So I'm gonna start with the hair. I'm just gonna take this dark brown that we made on my small brush. I'm gonna go ahead And color in with the hair. And then I'll add a little tiny piece of hair going down. And while it's all wet, I'm going to take some white and I'm going to add a bit of highlights into the hair. I'm going to highlight this bottom part. And some of it will blend, some of it will not, and that's good. And I'm going to highlight a little bit here on the sides here. Oh, yes, Diana, I agree with you. Very interesting how that works. So that's my hair. And maybe, I'll, you know what, maybe I'll go back to brown and I'll just add a bit of a messiness to my hair. Just a touch of messy, messy hair.
this is what it looks like. And now with a brown, I'm going to continue and I'm going to go on to silhouette and I'm going to do the wash again. So again, I'm just going to grab a little bit of my brown, not a lot. I'm going to water it down just a little bit so it's more liquid. Because I find that wash is actually easier to do with paint that's already liquid. I'm just going to add some of the brown right here and right here on the sides of the silhouette. And then right away, I'll wash off my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and with a clean, slightly wet brush, with just basically water, and not even a lot of water, just a little bit of water. I'm gonna wash that towards the middle. And as needed, of course, you can grab a bigger brush or more water, just to spread it a bit further if needed, if needed. I find that my small brush does just fine, but if you find that small brush doesn't really do it, it smudges the line, as I'm blended further in, um, you can grab a larger brush and do this with a larger brush for larger spread areas. So we'll start with that and then I'm gonna move on to back to my wings and I'm gonna do very similar to what I did with my blue, darker blue, but with brown. This time, the majority of brown should go right here. So it's gonna be concentrated here and then as it goes, Further, it should be less and less and less until it disappears. So that's the goal with our brown. And again, I'm gonna be using my fairly watered down brown. It's not like a super liquid, but this is what it looks like. It's just not as solid as a straight brown would be. So do you see it's a little bit lighter and it's a little more liquid, but it's not, I'm not using basically like a watercolor technique. I'm not using almost like a dirty water consistency. I'm still using paint visibly dark brown paint, just not probably as dark as it could be. But if your paint is naturally liquid and it comes dark, you can use that too. It's not, I'm mostly watering down for consistency here versus for color. The color going getting lighter is more of a byproduct versus intention. Intention is a liquid paint to do those fine lines. It's easy to work with. And I can just smudge a little bit when needed to lighten it up, to more of a blend it into what's going on because I don't want a harsh ends, right? So when it starts disappearing, I would like to either be watering it down more or just even smudging it a little bit with my finger after I apply to kind of remove that top layer of paint so it looks lighter. And more merged. All right, I think this is enough for me personally. I think this looks cool. It's nicely merged um, towards the outer area. So I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna move to my second wing.
All right, I think this looks awesome. I think I'm down with my brown here as well on the wings. So what I'm gonna do next is I am going to add some splatter everywhere, but before I do that, I'm going to take my large brush. Now this one is a tricky one too, and you can do this with two different techniques. You can water down your paint, and you can, well, that's what I did originally. I did a water down paint, so that's why it looks a little bit messy in a way, abstract, which I love. I love the look. But um, if you want it a little bit more subtle and not as messy, but more controlled and all that, um, you could do a more of a dry brush technique. So that's where, again, you take the minimal amount of paint and you just lightly rub it versus going a little more messy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my brown, really water it down this time to like consistency of a dirty water. And with that, I'm gonna go around the edges, just, just adding a little bit of that. And I gave you a warning, it's gonna look a little messier than it was before, but I do like that. I like that it gives it the rustic kind of look. Because right now, do you see how smooth my background is? It intentionally gets rid of that. So if that's not your look, then you can actually dry brush some brown with more like the same way that we did. Do you remember how I did white? Very almost like a powdery technique. And then it's going to be a lot more neat and it's not going to have this intentional messiness. I did it for intentional messiness, so I'm going to keep that. So you see, it, made, it made, makes it look more rustic. Now, if you're using gold, you could do this with gold. You could do this if you find that brown is like a, a little iffy for you. With gold, I guarantee you're going to love it. You can't mess it up with gold. With brown, yes, you can. With gold, probably not. So if you are using gold, you could do this with gold. But if, just remember, it's going to be a generous amount of gold on your background. So depending on how a lot or a little gold you want, you, again, you can skip this step. You can modify it to powdery, um, more like a dry brush technique with a brown, or you could do this large amount with gold. If you want just a little bit of gold on your painting, then skip this in gold. Don't do this in gold. Just do the splatter in gold and the highlights on the wings in gold. All right, so for those who will be doing highlights on the wings, do them before the splatter. You don't want to do splatter first and highlights later. You want to do highlights first and splatter later. So the same way that we did, do you remember how we did white here? So there are two ways you could incorporate gold. You can incorporate gold on the outlines the way that we did with brown and dark, dark blue, but I probably wouldn't recommend bringing it from here out. I'll probably, if you're doing gold, I'll probably recommend from the outside in. So if you do the, regardless of what you do, highlight or outline, I'll probably recommend focusing the most on this side and then less and less as you go towards the middle. So you could do the outline and then what will glow and what will pop is the outline of your feathers. So again, it's the same technique, you just add the outline in gold and then it slowly disappears. But if I were doing this personally, I actually have gold, let's do it. Let's do it guys, I'm convinced. I don't, I don't intentionally have gold on my table. table. I was actually preparing for um, a different tutorial and I was making a manual for it and I was using gold there, so. But I do have it on my table, so we may as well. And I'm only gonna use a tiny, tiny dot because A, long goes, a little goes long way, and B, golden paint costs the gold. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that. I'll just water it down to the consistency that I need, not specifically for transparency reasons, but just it's nice and liquid. And what I would do, and this is like more of a brassy kind of gold, it's not the warm and light gold. I would say, I don't even know what it's called. Iridescent bronze, never mind, that's what it's called. But it looks like a brassy gold to me personally, because it doesn't have too much of a reddish bronze um, color. It more has like a brassy tones, and it's kind, kind of quite compatible with my brown, as you can see, right? So again, gold is not required, but I would personally do, I probably wouldn't do the outline, I'd probably do 
just like a little flicky highlight in gold. But again, that's one option. I'll show you both options. Because I have two paintings, right? I may as well. So that's one option. One option is to add more of a... Do you remember how we used white? So similar to that. In gold. So basically I'm adding it on the inner side versus the outline of each feather. And it doesn't have to be each feather either. It can be some selected feathers. It doesn't have to be every single feather. So you see now, like when the light hits it, right? It looks more like that's glowing, but keep in mind it does add darkness. So notice that now to this side, I'm going to do the outline so you can compare. So the plus side of the outline, it doesn't add darkness to your white, like it keeps the feathers light inside. Where here, do you see it covers some of your white? So it kind of visually dims it a little bit. The downside, when the light hits right, the... Um, gold starts glowing right and in that case what glows here makes the feathers pop what goes here makes the feathers it doesn't make them sink but it doesn't make them pop it makes the outline pop it doesn't make the highlight pop if that makes sense all right so guys you know what after trying both ways actually leaning towards this one now i think this looks pretty neat and again, both have their own um, pluses and minuses. Neither one is a bad way to do it. Both look good, but comparing two results to both, I think I actually prefer this one. So do you see this is what this looks like? This is what that looks like. From this angle, from this angle. Because this affects the general image a little less it keeps the whites the white sections white right so the highlights stay highlighted but it does affect your darkness a little bit it makes the contrast a little less because you're adding it over the darker areas um where here you're not touching your darker areas but yeah i feel like i would prefer that actually now that i see the comparison visually but again either is good this one doesn't look bad it just I mean, I think this is more my cup of tea. But this looks good too. I would not discourage you from doing this. This looks good too. Okay, so now that you've seen the comparison, I'm gonna move to my brown and I'm literally just gonna water down some more brown, but this time I'm gonna keep it dark and I'm gonna splatter some. I'm gonna splatter a little bit right here. Um, maybe I'll water it down a little more. Maybe it's a little too dark. Splatter some right here on the it on the ends. And another thing you could do if you find that your splatter is just too dark, you could grab a piece of paper towel, preferably dry one, fold it, and slightly dab those. Don't wrap them. Slightly dab, and what that does, it's gonna lighten up your splatter in half because it takes off the top half of that paint. Do you see? So it lightens it up. It keeps the shape of your splatter, keeps everything, just lightens it up. So you could do that with brown, and then I'm going to do splatter with white, and then if you want, you could do splatter with gold too. And then with white, it's the same. I water it down, not to like a crazy consistency, but it's still, it needs to be a bit more liquid than normally, because otherwise it just splatter wouldn't splatter if your paint is too thick. Then I take a brush full, but not, I don't take a blob of paint on it. I just make sure the paint is all the way into the bristles of my brush. I'm going to move my laptop. This laptop seen things, but there's no need to add to it unnecessarily. And again, I'm going to splatter some. I'll definitely splatter some in the middle to break up this darkness here because there's so much darkness. Some on here, and then just wherever. I like doing on my edges because they're so bare right now. There's not much going on there. 
And of course, you can go even further. You can water down your paint even more and just splatter like this with a brush. And this splatter is going to be larger and more like an ink in a splatter. It's going to be more linear um, versus the little firework splatter if you use your finger or if you use a separated brush, right? This one was just a brush on even more liquid paint. It's larger, less controlled, more abstract. So again, it's everyone this choice what you prefer personally because i'm going for a rustic look i'm adding both and now you can do gold we may as well we'll already have gold on our plate so i'm going to water it down a bit more i'll do larger splatter with gold oh yeah this is so pretty but again i love like again i personally love the rustic look i love abstract it's not a turn off for me because of how my brain works. I welcome this. Not everyone's brain is the same way. Some people like more controlled things and this splatter will drive them crazy. So if you are a more controlled person, that's okay. You can replace splatter completely. You can do dots. Dots are fine. Um, you can do dots with all of those colors that I listed or you can just do gold, for example, and you can use any brush that has a round or back end and just dip it in your paint and dot, 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 dot. That's an option. You can do a little brush strokes instead of splatter, um, just like for accent. You can do a couple dabs of gold for a little accent. If you have a stencil, let's say at home, what are the chances? But maybe you have a stencil at home. You can actually use a stencil, maybe whatever pretty stencil you have, and just like sponge some gold on to create that light, um, texture of some kind or if you have a fabric that have maybe has like you know those fabrics that are half transparent I'm not sure what the English word for it is that are half transparent and have this like floral pattern you can use that if you have that and, and actually sponge some gold over it or honestly whatever you, your imagination takes you we just want to have something more interesting with the corners here that's the goal and of course, you can add a bit of splatter on the angel too, but I didn't add gold on the angel itself. I added it more on the sides because I already have those beautiful golds here and I didn't want to take away from that. And of course, you can go a lot more gold heavy than I did. Um, you can add gold on a um, dress. You can literally color in the dress. You can add gold on a hair. You can add the halo. A lot of places where you can take this painting with gold. But for me... I'm content. So I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to sign it and call it a day. All right, guys. And she is done. Woohoo! So if you have any questions, ask away. Uh, there is a link if you're following now or if you're going to be doing this later. Uh, whenever you finish, feel free to share your results with us. There is a link in the description of this video to a Facebook group where we always encourage everyone to share the results. So please do that. If you're not shy, love seeing how they turned out. If you're shy and you don't want to, that's no problem. We don't want to pressure you to something you don't want to do. You don't want to be doing. But feel free. We love seeing how it turned out for everyone and see the differences because it's so different. It's so different for every single person. And that's the beauty of it. Following the same tutorials, I mean, such a variety of beautiful results. Something to be celebrated. So that's one. Second thing, if you guys enjoyed this tutorial and you do want to tip me and say thank you that way, you're more than welcome. It's never something you have to do. It's not an obligation. But if that's your way of saying thank you, I will never say, say no to that. There is a um, PayPal link in the description of this video. You can just click on that and leave any tip that you wish. And those of you guys who just uh, who did pre-tip through our website because you had faith <laughs> in my ability of tutorial teaching and you thought that this was a cool painting, thank you so much. I do really appreciate it. It does help our artists a lot to keep doing what we do. And the last thing that I wanted to mention, that if you guys here for the first time and maybe you just accidentally stumbled on our a YouTube channel, feel free to stick around to take a look at other stuff that we have. 
either already that we've hosted here or something that's coming up. There's also a link to our website in the description. You can just click on that and it will bring you to everything that's coming up. And you will see all the free tutorials are marked free on top. And you just in description, choose your free ticket and register and that way you're gonna be signed up for the next live class. Or you can just stay tuned to our uh, YouTube page and push notify me on the tutorials that we scheduled um, ahead because we schedule about a month ahead usually, sometimes more even a month and a half ahead or two months. So just take a look at what's coming live um, in the next couple of months. And if something interests you, you can click notify me and then it will notify you when we go live. And again, the links stay up here forever. So it's not going anywhere if you can't pay in that particular day and you want to come back and do it some other day. And that's pretty much it. Does anyone have questions? Questions, comments, concerns? I'll take them all. You're welcome. Thank you for joining. All right. If no one has questions, comments, or concerns, I am going to let you guys finish the beautiful angels in peace. And then I hope that I'll see some of them. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Bye.